Um, I think one thing that's helped the young Republicans bring different groups together is Reagan's 80-20 rule. Mm -hmm. If you agree with 80% of the party fat platform principles, you are a part of that party. Um, I think you see a difference of that at this, this table. We probably only agree with 80%, d different 80% right here. Um, I think that's one thing that young people, that's why we've been able to get in this year. They had, um, under the age of 30, more young Republicans and young Americans get involved on campaigns since 1952. And when you talked about those bad examples, well, thankfully, America didn't choose those. And they chose the good examples reaching out to the Hispanic community, which gave the RGA at their last meeting, the face of the, the GOP, they presented this, was Governor Martinez, Governor Nikki Haley. That's the face of G the GOP, and that's not just some out forward, press down messaging. That's who we really have as our leadership. We really do in our young republic, 50% women minorities. I mean, that's who we are, and maybe just reaching out and, and showing what we really believe in, and, and you're, you're actually one of us. We believe, I believe in the same thing you do, I think, is coming with our generation. And on those issues, uh, I do believe the 80, 20%, most Hispanics would agree with that. And I think they're going to come to find that. The um, immigration debate has been, you know, played on, on both sides for votes. Uh, but over the long haul, and we're going to get new census numbers in a couple of weeks yeah. that are probably going to um, give some people pause about that kind of politics. But we'll see. I mean, yes, uh, securing the border and, and figuring out how to how to provide uh, a fair response to the people who are already here is probably not mutually exclusive. But do you have any sense that this Congress is ready to do it? That, that in, in the current political situation, where a victory for one side is perceived as a loss for the other, even if the United States is the winner, that we can actually work our way out of this? I, I, I believe, excuse me, I believe that, that many people I probably we're going to disagree here, but many people like myself, we do not believe in amnesty. And we don't believe in, like myself, in a three not. And, and, I, um, and the only reason why I say that is because we believe that we, we are a country have to have uh, legal immigration as, as the backbone for America. And I think uh, one of the things that has been uh, used by, by uh, the Democrats is, is, is the legal immigration monkey on the Republican side. And it's always like, a, like a, a portraying us that we are against immigrants. And, and, and we have to look back to history. And in 1965, when, when, the, uh, when the Farmers Working Union was created by Cesar Chavez, and when Cesar Chavez used to, used to go there and protest in farms that were hiring Mexicans braceros, and he used to call immigration, and he used to call those, those illegal immigrants Mexicans, his own raza. He used to call immigration and deport those peoples. And that's what, that happens in American history. And, and that's something that, that many people do not know, that the, the, the Democratic Party has closed uh, immigrants for being able to come here legally. They were, there was a working, uh, a Bracero program, he would allow, allow uh, 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 temporary workers to come here and work and then go back to their houses. And it was, it, it was something nice, something good. And now what they're doing is they block the border. Now that they have all these illegals, oh, we are the good guys. Now we want you to give citizenship. Why? Why, after blocking the border, why they don't open the border in a, in a matter in which people could come here, work legally, and then they go back home? Because it's not in the best interest of the unions. It's not in the best interest of the political game. They are playing the Latinos like, like peons back and forth. And that is disgusting from the Democrats. And that's something that we have to remind our, our fellow Latinos, that the, the only reason why they want it is because they want their money, their contributions to the unions, because the unions support, most of the SELU and also the other unions support that, that immigration reform. And also it's, it's, a, it's a political power. They're going to grab a political blocking vote there. And that is, that's something well, we not have all to unions mind. have the same approach. Oh. Uh, and not all unions have the same approach. Um, but the, the big unions like SEIU 
have one approach. The craft unions, the skilled workers unions have another because they are not encouraging large numbers of new people to come into the country because they think it bids down the price of labor for people who are already well, here. Well, those but are the people who block it in the past. The farmers, you know, block it. SEIU people block it. Now they want to benefit, so now they are, they are open for that. I mean, you cannot the have The irony it is a lot of people were coming back and forth with the seasons, going home when there was no more work, hardening the border over the last 10 years in Republican and Democratic administrations has actually made more illegal permanent residents because they can't go home because they're afraid they won't be able to get back in. Something yeah. important to remember about immigration, uh, since we're talking about that, is that we have to stop saying that immigration reform didn't happen because of the Republicans, because that's not true. And if you look at history, that's not what happened. What happened is the following. The Democrats played politics with immigration to make it the wedge issue to get more elections and then they didn't deliver. That was outrageous. They could have delivered in immigration reform and they didn't. But they are still blaming the Republicans, which is not true. If President Obama didn't pass it, it's for two main reasons. It was not a priority to him. And second, he knew probably that the same Democrats were not going to support him, that he was not going to be able to pass. So this is not something that you can put it only in the Republicans. It belongs to the two parties. About racism, which is the underlying uh, myth of immigration, it's becoming a Republican or becoming a Democrat doesn't make a person a racist. What makes a person a racist in the way he or she was raised, it comes from very early in life. It's not that once you regi register in some particular party, you change personality. This is something that is really ingrained in your mind. Well, so we're in the last few weeks of a lame duck session in Congress. The DREAM Act, Harry Reid, the Senate Majority Leader, is promising to bring it up again. Is it uh, maybe bad law but good politics from the point of view of Republicans to pass it? Are they taking a risk by... Um, slow walking it, running out the clock, and perhaps killing it with a couple of days left to go in this session. I don't know. If, and you just said a couple of days of session. So here we are. We're sitting. We're at the, the final hours of this Congress. And uh, all parties agree that something needs to be done with immigration reform. We talked about that, that the pieces aren't mutually exclusive. But as Tito said, we're not about rewarding bad behavior. And so when you, you had Susana Martinez and New Mexico and you had Marco Rubio say, we need reform, but we're not just going to have a blank in amnesty here. Yes. Um, and at the same time, there needs to be some incentives towards pathway towards citizenship. Uh, as, a, as a combat veteran, as a current army officer, I've served with Latinos and Latinas who became who were fast tracked to citizens because they joined the U.S. military. Those are some things that are components. But to, to rush this through at the last few hours is probably not the best course of action. Addressing immigration reform in the next Congress, absolutely. But to, to jam it through, uh, I don't know if that's probably the best, probably is not the best thing to do right now. Do young Republicans and college Republicans have a position on the DREAM Act? Yeah. One thing on the DREAM Act that's stepped out to a lot of us is that it would allow in-state tuitions. And that's something where you know, the average college student gets out and they have at least $24,000 of college debt. Um, and, you know, we struggle to even get an in-state tuition for a very competitive school versus an out-of-state. Exactly. So there's legal aliens that aren't even allowed to get in-state tuition. And that difference there of fifteen, twenty thousand dollars $20,000 can make or break their financials for the next 10 years. That is huge. That, that is just the backpack of ten extra thousand dollars on on other students and and you asked about all this one thing a lot of the young prof professionals young republicans worked on campaigns and one thing my friends and i have said thankfully with this round of republicans that were just elected our, our top topic here the new republican majority one thing we said is this is a new round of candidates these are people that instead of just you know, being past politicians that would do the thing that was ever best for them, and will this ever get passed? No, because in the political realm, it's not in their best interest. This was a group of people that stepped away um, from their private sector jobs 
and, and really did a duty for America because they wanted change. They're not in it about to get reelected themselves. They're going to do the vote that they believe in, not to necessarily be an elected Congress member for 20 years. That's something I saw. I worked for Keith Freeman in Virginia, example of a CEO that stepped outside of his realm. I mean, he'd do better off staying in the private sector. And I just thought a lot of those candidates got elected. We have a lot of hope in this new uh, Republican majority that will actually make long-term decisions and um, tackle this stuff honorably.